The Lake Michigan shoreline community of Grand Haven, normally a peaceful place that feels like a sleepy seaside town which happens to be on a lake, felt more like a city under siege on Thursday as local residents braced and faced a harsh November storm that meteorologists had predicted would be the worst to hit the West Michigan Lake Shore since 1998, when winds of 65 miles per hour created a freak Great Lakes tsunami, resulting in widespread devastation that all Grand Havenites remember and many are still recovering from. Fortunately, the storm had been predicted in advance by local weather forecasters, allowing plenty of time for the timid and fearful to evacuate and head for safety inland while the more adventurous gawkers, surfers, and onlookers who weren't gawking all made their way towards the Grand Haven State Park, which created massive traffic jams both in and out of town, only adding to the mayhem and chaos already being created by the raging storm. Many local news crews appeared on the scene. Wood Storm Team 8 was said to be adding reinforcements from the National Guard in an effort to videotape all of the fallen trees, crushed cars, and damaged roofs throughout the area. Local public safety officers issued warnings and cordoned off entryways to Grand Haven South Pier, but daring, thrill-seeking surfers couldn't resist the thrills of big waves. Unfortunately, just as we were preparing to interview a surfer and a member of the notorious local rock pile gang, I was knocked over by a wave hitting the pier, only to awaken 18 hours later at North Ottawa Community Hospital, where I'm currently being treated for a concussion, multiple contusions, and a post-coma depression. This is the last wave I remember. The storm now passed. Grand Haven and other West Michigan communities are beginning to survey the damage from Black Thursday's vicious storm. But fortunately, even miraculously, this killer storm didn't actually kill anyone. There have so far been no reported fatalities. This is Jerome Lawrence reporting for the Grand River Times.